I want to welcome everyone here today uh, for the uh, dedication of the Chester White House. My name is Greg Todd. I'm the county administrator. And our first order of business, Mickey, if you could cut this tree down <laughs> so we could get a little bit better view in here, it'd be great. Um, if everyone could please stand, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You have a seat. We're going to kick this right off. We've got a number of speakers, so I'm going to turn this over to our Commissioner Mark Anderson, who represents this district. Mark. We have a, a panel of speakers that are uh, very distinguished. I'm here uh, speaking for our county council, county commissioners. Uh, without uh, their help, uh, this wouldn't exist. And without the assistance of a lot of other people, this wouldn't exist. And it's a very uh, honor to be speaking for my colleagues at this momentous achievement. We continue in this county to demonstrate heart. Uh, heart, in my way, is measured as a community's recognition of human need, whether or not that need arises from unseen dangers like accidents, uh, uh, various other uh, events like tornadoes uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, we mobilize our volunteer fire departments, uh, volunteer fire departments, uh, the county's emergency services, faith great uh, uh, groups, uh, neighbors, helping neighbors. Uh, there's a, mo a massive volunteer willingness to help. Your county government, as I mentioned, plays a key role in helping mobilize this in an organized fashion. Why do we do it? We do it out of compassion to meet the need as best we can, and in this case, so nobody is left behind. We're here to celebrate yet another uh, contribution to, co to our compassion by opening this facility, a near 3,000 square foot alternative living home, which will provide the best care for these county citizens with profound intellectual and physical disabilities. That care will give these people, our citizens, an individual quality of life not available elsewhere. Well, a question might ask, or be asked, how did all this start? Well, like most success stories, it started small over 50 years ago by a person by the name of Bobby Ann Nash. And she was in Stevensville, a citizen in Stevenville. She correctly believed the quality of life many of us take for granted and is not the case for a number of our people and citizens, sh we should make those folks as productive and as happy as can be possible. She and several other families founded Guiding Hands, the start of what we see here today. It was to create a volunteer network of families to provide home care for their children and others that are afflicted with these disabilities. But she didn't stop there. A year later, a board was created, and it was created to go countywide with this effort. This board obtained a tax qualification in order to promote fundraising. In 1979, a businessman, a generous businessman by the name of Thomas Ewing, donated three acres of property and a support facility was built to magnify the number of people that could be supported. As this new need grew and more people became aware, uh, the organization's capacity to meet that need also expanded. What we see here today is the next step in, pain, in maintaining the quality of life for these citizens, our citizens in our county. 
It was specifically designed to provide unique care necessary for the care of and the life quality of these clients. But it also helps the quality of care because the volunteers uh, have the necessary equipment that can facilitate that care. I usually do this expositorily, but I don't want to miss anything because Lois Miller would give me heck. <laughs> anyway, this unique structure was substantially funded through grants uh, from the state. Those grants would not have been available for this facility unless the Hogan administration had not made certain changes in what these grants could be used for. Governor Hogan is a man of compassion and he supports wholeheartedly what we're doing here today. I think, if I am quoting right, I've heard it through seven, several sources, that when he saw what was going to be done, his first reaction is, we can use these grants in other places around the state. So here we are, another first that can help people possibly all over the state. This was not a random act of kindness. Those are good, but this was a purposeful action and, co and completes here what Bobby Nash started over 50 years ago. And it's joined by an ever-growing recognition of this need by all of our caring citizens, who I hope are watching this on QAC-TV uh, and understand the value of Chester Y and uh, what it does. Yes, our county citizens show again we have a giving heart, and this is another major component of that giving heart. We answer the call when need cries for help, and in some cases uh, the cry is silent, and in other cases it's loud, but we answer no matter what, when, or who makes the call. And again, I'm proud to be speaking for our county commissioner. It takes uh, a majority, and in this case, uh, five supporting this activity because it's the right thing to do, and I'm glad it's here. So that is my beginning comments. Okay, thank you, Mark. Appreciate those comments. Uh, next, we got Wheeler Baker, and Wheeler can probably tell the story better than I will, and he probably will tell it. But he came to me, oh, I guess it's been a year and a half ago or so, probably actually more than that, a couple years ago, and uh, asked if, if we had any sites that would be available for this type of housing. And I said, well, do I have a deal for you? <laughs> we had just uh, we had just gotten done going through the process with the homeless shelter that was not successful. So we had this property down here. And I thought it would be a great location for him. And I did know that he would run into some, uh, could run into some is, uh, issues with the residents. But after the first meeting, and Deborah made her cookies, I think she bought her. She won everyone over. So, uh, so with that, I'm going to introduce Wheeler. So, Wheeler, come on up. <laughs> we bribed him with cookies. Okay. It's it's a great day. Happy to be here. I'd like to start off with the recognize the board members. Um, Miss Ava Honeycutt, put your hand up. Stand up. Let me see you. Butch Britt, where are you, Butch? <laughs> Sally Hoyt, she's out there. Jim Knight. Did I see Becky Burner make her way in here? Thank you. Did Donna Bryant make it in? Great. I'd also like to take this opportunity. When I came on the board years ago, I came on, uh, Dr. Harry dragged me in here in, in 1979. When he, gets his, when he got his claws into you, you worked. Buck, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I would also like to acknowledge our past uh, executive director and CEO, Ms. Mary Lou Boyd. She worked long and hard for this organization. At this time, although I've always already mentioned him, uh, the president of the Midshore Community Foundation, located down in the eastern, Mr. Buck Duncan. Stand up, take a nod. They've helped us out. Every year they've been good to us, and we truly appreciate it. 
Jack Smago wanted to be here. He, he just couldn't do it. Thanks to all that made this happen. Commissioners, the support staff, this just doesn't happen just waving your finger. It takes a lot of people for this to put it together. But as I mentioned, uh, Dr. Rhodes, he would be elated to see this. Do for those of you who don't know, Dr. Rhodes was a former superintendent of schools back in the 60s, 70s, and he saw, here comes another board member right there, Miss Diane coming up. He, he saw, he knew what, what, the, what the problem was with the people that need help. And Mary, uh, um, Bobby Ann Nash had a problem, acknowledged the problem, and went to work, and Dr. Rhodes helped her any way he could. And that was huge for our county. We didn't have anything to, we didn't have anybody to do anything like this. We didn't have facilities. And I, you, got, you got to admire the foresight of those two. They did a wonderful job. So here we are today. So I just want to say that uh, lots of these folks here, not all, but lots of these folks, Chester Y is their family. You know, you can just say, but for the grace of God, there are I. Think about it. It's the truth. And they, they, uh, we try to give them a good life. And it's our job as board members to facilitate their well-being, make their lives as pleasant as could possibly be. Are there obstacles and problems? Sure. But we, we have a great staff, and we work with it. We work through them. Now, those of you who have not been in here, you're in for a real treat. Those that have been will know this house is designed to handle the chronically disabled, people that really need some help. And one thing you don't want to forget about with that is the caregivers. The people have to work with them. God bless them. I'm telling you, that's a heck of a job. But this, with this tracking system in here, is just terrific. It will help them immensely. I, th I was just talking to someone out there, and we were talking about, has this been done in the state before with, with funds like this? It's my understanding that for the developmentally disabled, this is the first. So it's, it's a model for what can be done. So I'm telling whoever's responsible for this, bring your Bring your people from other counties, other states, don't make a difference. Bring them over here so they can see what is possible, what you can do to help, help your fellow humanity out. And we were happy, we were happy to work with the county and the state. And, but there's one thing, one person that needs a lot of recognition. There's lots of folks that worked on this, but one person that kind of melded it all together. You know, you got, you got to make these guys happy, and these guys happy, and then you got to make Chester Y happy. It all has got to come together. Fellow sitting right here, the the man that's the MC of this, Greg Todd, and give him a hand. Now I'm not going to be. I've, I've, I've said I could stand here and talk to you for a while, but I'm not in politics anymore. I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to cite uh, a statement from one of the neatest, best politicians we ever had in, in this state. God bless you all, real good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Wheeler. I appreciate those kind words. Uh, next, we're got uh, Deborah's going to come up and speak. But before she does, I do want to take a minute to recognize some of our staff that worked on this. <clears throat> um, you know, it was it was a process to get through all this, and Mike Clark really spearheaded it. So, Mike, thank you. Uh, Mickey Lomax was in charge of making sure the construction was done right, except for this tree that's planted in the wrong spot. <laughs> Mickey, that's fine. We won't hold that against you. Uh, we had a great set of architects: uh, Dave Woodward, and Nate. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, did a very nice job on helping us redesign this. How many times? Five times? Six times? Doesn't matter. A couple of times. And then uh, Kenny Gray at KRM Construction built us a nice house. So Kenny, thank you very much. We appreciate that. So next, like I said, we've got Deborah. So Deborah, come on up. I can't tell you how pleased we are to have this home. And it is, as of yesterday, it was a house. People moved in yesterday, and it's starting to become a home. And it's a home for four guys, David, Anthony, PJ, and Mike. And this is going to be a fabulous home for them as they figure out how to operate and move around. And as you will know, um, all four of the men use a wheelchair. And the tracking in the, in the ceiling is going to be a phenomenal process, um, benefit to them as to well as to the staff. So we're very pleased with this. But 
it would not have happened without the county, the county commissioners, and um, the commitment that has come to Chester Y. It, it's been phenomenal. The other component that, that has followed along with this is the commitment from the state. You know, we like to say it's it's the partnerships that you build. It's the community that we have been able to create. So we've been able to um, include KRM construction. As, as um, Greg said, you know, the Mans Woodward architects, we met every other week for over a year to tweak every little bit of it. Now, what do we think about this? What do we think about that? Now, mm, let's try something else. And always went back to the drawing board to see what else we could do to make things better. Um, and then once we've got the building going and, and we have this beautiful house, um, then we had to move people in. And part of what we do is we are involved with the Developmental Disabilities Administration and we can't just move people in. Everybody had to agree that they wanted to come. We had to get approval for people to transfer to this house. And I can tell you that this would not have been possible without the developmental disabilities of the Eastern Shore. And my big contact was a day who helped make this all happen and make sure everything was right. We had to get this place licensed. You're gonna go through and think, there is a pantry in there with, my goodness, how much food. Well, part of what we have to do is three days worth of food. Has to be, non-perishable food has to be pre prepared and available. So we did that. A day got us through the licensing. We had to make sure everybody came through. And so we've had a day with helping sure the, the, the money is there and the approvals are there and so we've got a day and I don't know who else. We have Kim Kishidal who is the, the head of DDA in the Eastern Shore. That's the Eastern Shore DDA. But we also have the Office of uh, Secretary of Disabilities from Governor Hogan's office here and Governor Hogan's office, the Developmental Disabilities Office, have been fabulous in making sure that we were going forward. So we've got not only the state things, but we have all of the county com components together. Mike Clark, Mickey Lomax, I tell you, I called them both on vacation and they answered their phones, you know, it was amazing. Um, but it, you can tell, we just got so much work done and it's been really nice. As I said, yesterday the house was a house Today we're trying to make it a home as people moved in yesterday and you're gonna see things aren't quite in place, but you will notice that some people are Ravens fans and some people are Redskins fans. And oh boy, I can't imagine what the nights and the days are gonna be like here, but that's okay. It's part of a home. So again, thank you to everyone and we really, um, you know, it's part of our, my job. I really tried to help the community, the community neighborhoods be aware of what was going on. And so I would um, send emails, I would call um, to a couple of the, the folks and we would make sure that everybody was involved and knew what was going on. We don't want surprises. So that's what we did. So we're very glad you're here and I'm going to t turn it over. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Deborah. Uh, as we talked about, there's, there's, there was state funding involved with this, and it's a CDBG, which is Community Development Block Grant, and that's managed through the Department of Housing and Community Development at state level. And it was originally uh, for a homeless shelter, <clears throat> which, like we said, did not, did not end up getting built, and we built this wonderful home instead. But there's one person that really worked with, worked with us on that. Uh, you know, you hear a lot about you know, problems with, with bureaucrats and state employees and county employees and they don't ever want to do anything and it's always no. Well, our next, our next speaker was a yes. Cindy was always yes. Anytime we came to her, she said, yeah, let's figure out how to get that done. And it was very, um, it was very refreshing to have someone at the state that was that willing to work with us. And we worked with Cindy on a number of projects and I know a lot of times she rolls her eyes when, when I come into the room because I typically have an excuse or a, or, a, or a different idea on what we want to do, but she's always very supportive. So I want you to give a big hand to Cindy Stone. A little eye rolling. A little eye rolling. 
So uh, the Community Development Block Grant Program, those are federal funds that the Congress gives to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, and they give it to the state, and we administer this program. It funds a variety of activities and uses that benefit people, and so my staff, we love what we do. We do great projects, and this is one of those, and we work with great people, including the county. <laughs> and uh, Mickey, I like the tree. I'm, I think it's a good one. Though I don't understand why this one's got flowers and this one doesn't. <laughs> Say that again? It's Mike's fault. Okay, got it. Um, okay. So anyway, um, you know, every parent wants to make sure that no matter what their age, that their child lives in a safe, decent house that they are taken care of. And every child wants to grow up and be completely independent of their parents and not live with them. And the Chester Y helps those that need a little bit more assistance live independently. And so for that, we are all eternally grateful for your organization and organizations just like yours that help those that just need a little bit more. On behalf of the Secretary of the House, Department of Housing and Community Development, Kenneth Holt, I applaud you for what you did here, Chester Y and the county. This is a great project. This is a great day. So thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Also, I would be remiss if I did not thank Donna Soares, who works closely with Cindy as well. So next up, we have Ms. Charlotte Davis with the Rural Maryland Council. Good afternoon. So I'm Charlotte Davis. I'm the Executive Director of the Rural Maryland Council. We're an independent state agency located in the Maryland Department of Agriculture. Uh, our mission is we bring together federal, state, local, elected, appointed, and private stakeholders to identify the challenges in rural Maryland. We also administer two grant programs, the Rural Maryland Prosperity Investment Fund and the Maryland Agricultural Education and Rural Development Assistance Fund. So when we got the application to the MERIDAF program for this uh, facility, we were excited to have it. The intent of the program is to help build capacity as well as improve quality of life. So we felt that this certainly fit the bill. Um, we also look to leverage additional resources. So having the additional funds coming through the Department of Housing and Community Development as well as the other sources of funding is exactly what we look to see in our grant applications. Um, I need to thank Governor Hogan and the Maryland General Assembly for making these funds available to us. So please thank them when you see them. Uh, with Without it, we wouldn't be here today to be able to help uh, pay for this wonderful facility. And um, look, you know, want to welcome the residents to your new home. And uh, thank you for including us in this opportunity. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Charlotte. And I, I think I was remiss to say that the Rural, Rural, Rural Maryland Council funded the lift system that you see in the uh, bedrooms. So moving on, we have our favorite delegate, Steve Aaron. Steve. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. I, I have about two and a half hours. I want to talk about some things here, but uh, I'll make it a little bit brief for you all. Back when I was a kid, there was a TV show called The A-Team, and I always loved it when Hannibal came up and he said, um, I love it when a plan comes together. And um, I can't tell you how much uh, you guys should appreciate the A-Team you have here. Uh, you look at the county, you look at the Chester Y, and you look at DHC, DH. CD, and you sit back and say, we can make miracles happen. Um, the Chester Y has been a part of my life for the last 20 years plus. Um, we've been involved in it in some way, and it's so good to see see us actually do something together and see some things and some results come out. If you remember this, uh, the way the state always worked, we were going to take this homeless shelter, and all those dollars were supposed to go back to the state, but it took some people to get real creative, and you can't thank them enough to sit back and take these dollars and thank Governor Hogan for allowing this type of stuff to happen, but we really did something good out of something that was going a little bit south for us in the county. Um, it's a great partnership. Uh, you can't say enough good about it, but uh, on behalf of the delegation, Delegate Her I mean, Senator Hershey, Delegate Jacobs, Greist, and myself, I'd like to congratulate the Chester Y. I'd like to congratulate the county and the commissioners for all their hard work. And, uh, you know, I will say a little bit because I worked with this guy. Uh, Greg Todd is a guy that can make some things happen, and I've always had an appreciation for him. And uh, Cindy, what can I say? <laughs> um, you know, we all look at this, and I, I again, you guys, you guys got a good group here. This is a great opportunity for us. It's really a showcase, and I suggest you do talk to others about it because I can't congratulate Chester Y and everybody enough. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you, Delegate. I, I don't remember the A-Team. It must be before my time. <laughs> okay, next we have uh, the Honorable Carol Beatty. She's the Secretary of Maryland Dis uh, Department of Disabilities. Carol? I remember that show. So good afternoon, everyone. I am really honored to be here with you this, this afternoon. Um, First Lady Yumi Hogan sends her apologies uh, that she is not able to join you today, and also sends her best wishes on the opening of this beautiful new house, which will provide a warm and accommodating home to the four guys who are uh, really quite fortunate enough to be here. When Deb said that the Developmental Disabilities Administration requires people to be asked, I think that's a great thing. Where do you want to live? Who wouldn't want to live in this house? <laughs> so um, I also bring you greetings and best wishes from Governor Larry Hogan, Lieutenant Governor Boyd Rutherford, the entire Hogan administration, and your friends at the Maryland Department of Disabilities. We congratulate you on this major accomplishment. And I want to specifically mention and um, acknowledge members of the Chester Y Volunteer Board of Directors and the st staff leadership, um, starting with Executive Director Deb Langstaff and her entire team. We also want to thank the local county government, sponsors, and supporters whose collaborative efforts made this wonderful home possible. Providing opportunities for children and adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities to participate meaningfully in all aspects of life aligns with the administration's mission to change Maryland for the better, promoting equality of access, choice, and opportunity for Marylanders with disabilities. So meaningful engagement in community provides purpose and contributes to the quality of life for all of us. Our administration is committed to creating opportunities for children and adults with disabilities to thrive in Maryland. What is so impressive about this project is how strong and supportive a partnership developed that made building this home a possibility and a reality. And without, those, uh, part, without these partnerships or these uh, relationships, this would not be possible. The partners are almost too numerous to mention, but I think each one of the speakers um, acknowledged certain members of the partnership, and so I just want to say that our communities are really greatly st strengthened when we all work together, and this is a perfect example of that kind of partnership that we look for all over the, the state of Maryland, and you are truly changing Maryland for the better. Again, I'm thrilled to be here on behalf of the First Lady, Mrs. Humi Hogan, and the Hogan-Rutherford administration. We wish Chester Y organization much success in the next step of your exciting future as an organization. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Secretary. Well, that just about does it. I think we're going to cut a ribbon. I do want to thank, I've got a, a couple other directors here. I think Mike's here from Planning Zoning, Todd's here, and Kathy's here. They all uh, contributed to making sure that this project was successful. So, Michael, where do you want us for the ribbon cut? Mm -hmm.